In this video, I will cover how I implemented a currency system in Unity using visual scripting. But first, a poll. Would you rather have to purchase a paint job for your car every time you want to change the color, or purchase the color one time for a higher price and change it at will? Let me know in the comments, and whatever is decided, so it shall be. The money system in this game escalated in complexity quickly. It goes beyond just picking up a coin to keep track of a score. First, I had to create a global variable, called a saved variable in Unity's visual scripting system, which will save the money the player collects across all the scenes. Then I had to make the money pickup. This is a prefab using a money pack from Perfect Games on the Asset Store. There's a link to it in the description, and a small particle effect to draw attention to it. I used three 100s here, but that's actually irrelevant. The player won't really notice that due to the speed of the game. When it's picked up, it will add a random value between $16 and $42, which will be updated when I get the prices for all of the upgrades worked out. It's important to make sure that the prefab is a trigger so it doesn't collide with the player, but rather the player drives through it smoothly, triggering the event. I also added a collected money variable. This is to make sure the player is only awarded money upon completing a race. So the flow graph for the prefab adds the random pickup value to the temporary variable, and then that variable is added to the player's money when the level is complete. There is a one second delay in the graph as well to ensure the sound effect has enough time to finish before destroying the object. And for a little juice, I added an effect to the prefab that gives it a subtle bounce. First you have to get its Y position and store that as a graph variable, or else it will default to zero. And on this map, there's geography I had to account for, and I don't want the money spawning below the floor. Then we can use a sin function to calculate the range between negative one and one, and add that to the starting Y position that we set. Plug in the prefab spawned X and Z values, and it will bounce only up and down. It wouldn't be good for this prefab to spawn just anywhere in the level. I also don't want it to spawn at specific predictable points, so what do I do? Well, I have this entire road spline already created. Why not just use those nodes to grab a point on the road and spawn some money? I attach this flow graph to the spline that's already created for this level and will be for subsequent levels. For this to work, I had to tag each spline node with something specific. I went with road node, then I could code the graph. On the start event, it will reset the collected money to zero. From there, we find all objects with the tag and set a random value between zero and the number of nodes. Set a variable for that index and convert it to a string to set the current node. From there we can get a random node and its position, get the x, y, and z and plug those into a new vector 3. For me I did some modifications so that way the node doesn't always spawn in the middle of the road. I added 4 and subtracted 4 from the found z position so I could spawn it at any part of the road left to right. I also found that adding 1.7 to the y-axis put it at a nice elevation to drive through. Then you need to plug in a quaternion. Full disclosure, I don't really know what a quaternion is. It has something to do with rotation, only it's not rotation, it's a quaternion. I found negative 90, negative 90, negative 90, positive 90 produced the result I wanted, which orients the front of the money to the player. I just guessed until I got what I wanted. To add the money to the player's money total, we need to use our race manager. Since I set this up to calculate the last lap already, I can pull off the last node and simply add collected money to money and set that as the new total for money. The race manager is also where we're going to add the pause menu, but first we need to create the object to reference in this graph. The pause menu UI object is a canvas with a couple buttons and some information relayed to the player. The buttons are simple. One of them will return the player to the race, which is the exact same graph the tab key uses to reinstate gameplay. The other button returns the player to the garage and forfeits the collected money. Exit to garage is just a load scene unit. Very simple. The text info is two parts. One is just text. The other is our variable collected money. The other number is our variable for collected money. The text info is in two parts. One is just text. The number is our variable for collected money, plugged into a text mesh pro GUI unit. Now we can make the function to call this menu. We'll deactivate this UI and head back to the race manager. 
I'm setting this up for a little future proofing by using a key bind for the pause menu. It's a saved variable assigned to the tab key for now. Setting it up this way gives me the option for player customized key binds later if I want. Then we can simply run a branch off the key input to check whether or not the pause menu is active and execute the opposite. So it's a toggle that sets the time scale to zero which pauses the game state. This way the return to race button won't interfere with this script and won't cause a UI bug. The last thing to do for the money system is to set prices for the customization options. But that's a lot easier now that the system is in place. But as you can see, all the functions work. We can start in the garage level, load the race, collect the money, finish the race, and our money is added to the total. Or if needed, the player can just return to the garage mid-race and forfeit their picked up money. Thank you so much for watching. This video here is going to show you how to add coins if you don't need the whole currency system I just covered. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing.